Hi, this is Mark from Wolftooth Components. We're here today at Bikeworks Albuquerque and we're going to install the new remote sustain for RockShock's Reverb uh, dropper post. Hope you enjoy. All right, the tools we're going to need today include torque wrench, 6, 9, 10, and 11 millimeter open end wrenches, a set of Allen keys, 9 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, uh, we've got a 4 millimeter Allen bit, uh, which we're going to use for a couple different things, shock pump, eye protection, gloves, small bladed screwdriver or internal snap ring pliers for the depending on which model you have check the instructions and then of course your sustain kit the sustain mechanism includes two parts we're going to call the base which comes in an A and a B version depending on which seat post you have and a pusher which is this forked delrin piece they slide into and out of one another and they should slide nice and freely we also have our iSpec 2 in this case remote kit which includes the remote clamp for whichever brake lever or bar you're using, and then the sustain kit comes with cable and housing. All right, we're going to start off here by putting on our protective gloves and uh, glasses as well because we don't want any fluids in our skin or in our eyes. So we're going to put those on, and then we're going to have a look at our seat post. In this case, we've got the seat post out of the bike already. This is a reverb. B series, as indicated by the gold lettering up by the seat post head. If you have an A, which is the original version, uh, there won't be the gold lettering up here, but the second generation uh, Bs all have the gold. This particular model has a connect -a jig which is RockShox's quick disconnect kit um, that allows you to more easily remove the hydraulic remote. So, first step, we're going to take our six and nine millimeter open end wrenches going to disconnect the connectamajig. It's going to be a little bit stiff, but pop that apart. It's a spring-loaded disconnect. Once they loosen up, you can unthread the hydraulic hose, set that aside. So that's good to go. Now that you've got these two apart, so we're going to just clean up the seat post. So we're going to take a little rag. This one's pretty clean already, but it doesn't hurt to kind of get in there. Wipe off any grease around the seals base of the post, and certainly the parts we're going to be removing. And also we're going to remove the saddle. This is a little uh, Presta cycle, Presta ratchet, a handy little tool with a four millimeter hex bit. Um, which is really kind of nice for getting at seat posts. All right. Saddle. Part. If the bike's got any miles on it, there's probably a bunch of crud up in here, so we'll take that out as well. Inside the seat post, uh, under the clamp, you'll see a, a cap marked 250 psi. That's the. Uh, it's just a dust cap, but it accepts a nine millimeter socket. If you get your socket in there. Uh, this is a nice deep one. We can just do it by hand. Your valve cap comes right off. So that's those guys. And then this is very, very important. We need to remove all of the pressure. We're gonna keep the post upright so that oil isn't sitting near the valve and pointed away from ourselves. Boom, done. So the post is now depressurized. It's, there are two versions um, of internal retaining ring at the bottom of the post. The A series will require, will have an internal snap ring um, and this is just a, uh, a circlip. Kind of get in there with our really tiny screwdriver. There we go. There's your retaining ring. Set that aside as well. And right now, by pushing on the back, the top of the post, we can expose the bottom. And what we're looking to do is get access to this hex back here. That's an 11 millimeter hex. You can tell this post has been pulled apart a few times. But that We've got our 11 meter, millimeter open end wrench. 
10 millimeter open end wrench on the silver part. We're going to unscrew the silver part here. And you're going to lose a little bit of fluid here. It's not going to hurt to have something in there to soak it up. Or a receptacle you can dump into your old used oil bin. So a little bit of fluid in there. Now it's really important at this point that you do not compress the post. Okay, if you do, the thing in here will come flying out and uh, you'll be down at your bike shop asking for a rebuild, uh, much like bike works have done for me several times. So we're going to put this guy down. That's your seat post. Again, we have our sustain kit. You know, pull the base out. Your base will be marked either A or B. This is a B post. Let's get the fine thread. And screw it in by hand. And you meet resistance about two thirds, three quarters of the way in. It's not a big deal. I'm going to hand tighten that. And then get our torque wrench and 13 millimeter socket. Set the torque wrench to six newton meters. And then take our 11 millimeter open end wrench. six newton meters. So that's back in place. And then we're going to take our post, push the bottom of the post back in until the reverb base is seated. And pick up our retaining ring, a little circlip here. Of course your glove gets stuck in there. But that'll snap right back into place. Um, if you have the older A style with the snap ring pliers, you may need your snap rings to do that. But make sure that's fully seated. Um, that's in there. And boom. So you've got your sustained base on. So, I'm going to take our shock pump. You really, if you have a shock pump with a longer chuck, it makes life easier in about a minute after some frantic pumping. But I'm going to pump this, repressurize the pump. Oh, look at that. 249 PSI. If you have a short chuck, sometimes it's easier to spin the post. There we are. We take our dust cap, 9mm socket, reinstall the dust cap finger tight, just like you would on a uh, rear shock, and take your pusher. There's a quick sanity check. This is a forked piece. And that slides right in to the bottom of the sustain. And you can see that this moves with a little bit of resistance. It's, it's firm, but it's not, you know, you don't need to push it down against the bench. That says that things are working all right and we can go forward. So now that we have the sustain assembly installed in the bottom of our uh, B series RockShox Reverb C post. And take our shift cable. Uh, this is just a standard shift cable with a four millimeter head. And thread it, starting at the forked end, through the pusher, so it sits like this. And take it, fish it into the slot, real easy like. And then cover it. So that's all in place. Um, if you should ever need to remove the post for service or for travel. Now you need to free up a little bit of cable at the lever end and then boom, pops right out. So we're going to go and, and uh, route some housing through the frame but the key points here are that you need to leave about a quarter inch for the cable housing, the end of the housing, to move within the frame. That's not a ton um, but if you pull the housing overly tight you could run into trouble. Um, basically it'll suck itself back in. So we're going to do that and then meet you with the lever. So we've got our cable cut to length and routed through the frame um, to the reverb. We left about a quarter inch worth of extra housing at the bottom of the seat post uh, so that the um, actuator can actually work. And our Wolf Tooth remote, in this case an iSpec AB, is mounted to the Shimano Saint brakes. The instructions are on the website for that. Um, it's going to vary depending on what brake lever you have and whether or not you use an integrated clamp or a, uh, a bar clamp. 
So we've got our wolf tooth light action remote lever here. We're going to screw the barrel adjuster all the way in, kind of as a general rule to start, and run our cable under the bolt. Boom. Okay. Holding onto the cable, we're going to pull um, on the lever, push on the lever with the thumb, and then tighten the fixing bolt to two newton meters. There's really no need to go any higher. Um, it'll deform the cable more than is necessary and uh, it won't hold any better. So that's moving fine. It's not slipping. There's no slack, which is great. Um, we're going to take our cable cutters and crimp and cut cable behind the lever so it's hidden away to crimp the cable cap in place. Boom! We are done. Alright, so there you have it. You've got your new Wolf Tooth Sustain assembly and remote lever uh, installed right here to the RockShox Reverb, um, in this case B-Series post. Hit the lever, it drops. Lever again, it comes back up. It's, uh, it's what you want. No more bleeding, no more extra hydraulic lines, and uh, of course you get the ergonomics of the Wolf Tooth remote lever, the breakaway axle, the inline cable adjuster, and uh, yeah, easy service. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you out there. Thanks.